I could be brown, I, I could be blue, blue, I could be violet sky, I could be purple, I could be... I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be purple, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky. Isn't this song weird? Good morning, everybody. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet <laughs> sky, I could be purple, I could be purple, I, could, I don't I obviously know the words, so like. it's not that hard to learn them, Douglas. It's just one of those weird songs on social media. Good morning. Clearly, I don't know the words, but who cares? Pastor Doug with you on your midweek moment. God be with you. I pray uh, namaste, that the holy in me greets the holy in you. This song, uh, I could be purple, I can be blue, whatever it is, uh, just... One of those I caught on social media, and it catches in your mind, and you can't let it go. Uh, I would uh, welcome you. I'm at the St. Andrew's uh, uh, Church office today. Notice all the books that I completed. These are the books I completed. I fully completed while in seminary. <laughs> all the books are here. I told that to the staff, and Brother Ed Bailey said, how many books did Jesus read? Amen, Ed. So, uh, midweek moment, and I want to talk with you today about, well, about this word that comes around every fall in the churches that no one really wants to hear, stewardship. It's not really stewardship. I mean, on some level, that's the name we give it, but if you look it up, it means to manage or give oversight to an area of life or to like a ministry or to in our own personal lives for sure. So I am in my office here at St. Andrews and I am a steward of the office, if you will. I manage, I guess I manage the office. The whole thing is part of the pastoral duties. And so to be a good steward is to be many things in that regard. Right? I try to make my office comfortable for people to come in, comfortable for me to have all the essentials I need for work. I got all the books that I read in seminary, and I, you know, um, manage, right? Just like at my home, you and I are stewards of our homes. We're in charge of them, and we manage them, sometimes with other people, sometimes by ourselves. We're stewards of many, many things. And when we talk in the church, often the stewardship is about that horrible word, money. You know, we hear that all the time about money. And yes, that's true. You and I are stewards of our money. We are the decision makers about where those dollars go, however many dollars we have or how many little dollars we have. I'm always reminded of the story of the widow. Uh, the disciples are with Jesus in the Bible story where they're watching people give. And she just puts in, let's say for our world today, two pennies. And yet, because she's so poor, Jesus says she's given more than anyone else. So the giving is about your, your heart, your heart to God's heart, your heart to God's heart. You pray, you have conversation with your loved ones, and then you decide what you feel God, not Doug, not a council, not a budget, is calling you to give to your church and pray about it and then give and then really try to push yourself. We don't often ask for a little bit more uh, from people, but especially those of us who give online. This fall, we're trying to remind everybody to go online and raise your uh, amount that you're giving because it don't happens online, it's automatic, and we don't think about it very often. But you know, we're not just stewards of our dollars, to be sure. Uh, we're also stewards of our time. How are you doing with your time management, huh? Do you have time to watch a midweek moment? Many of you choose not to. Maybe some look to see how long it is. Time. Time is, we're surrounded by time. I got a clock on my desk. I have a clock down at the bottom of the computer. This is being timed. There's clocks in the church. You know, we have a, a roughly an hour-long church service. Go very far beyond that, and you're going to get up and leave. We are all covered up in time in our world. God calls us to break free from the pressure of time. Listen, self-imposed pressure and spend time with the Lord. And this is what coming to church is all about. 
it can be done on Zoom, but it's just not the same thing as being in person. The pandemic it seems to be lifting in our state. It's not that we're dramatically changing anything just yet, but the point is it's okay and it's safe to come because God loves you and is with you and we'll wear our masks and we'll be safe, but we're together as a family of faith. And so when we think about time, there's always time. When we say, I don't have any time, what we're saying is I don't manage it very well. When you and I say, I don't have time, what we're saying is I don't really manage my time well, or if I felt this thing you're asking me about was worth my time, I could give it accordingly. We are the ones that prioritize our time, right? And so when we talk about stewardship, friends, it's all, it's, it's, it's finances to be sure, but it's also time and it's also talent, right? All of you have gifts and skills that the church can use. All of you are afraid, I think, on some level, fearful of counsel. I'm not one, one among us in St. Andrews jokes about this being a 14-year commitment. You know, it's up to God and God's call upon your heart. Right now, here at St. Andrews, God has called Pat to me to provide clothing for the needy. And she's organized the clothing closet, and it has its first event uh, tonight uh, alongside the laundry ministry. God has called you and I into that space. Uh, to be able to give as God has given us. So what do we have passion for, right? Not all of us are into, maybe maybe you don't feel particularly passionate about donating clothing, although I don't know why you wouldn't, but maybe you're more apt to bring food in to give away or provide extra dollars to Lutheran World Relief for disaster ministries and those kinds of things. It's all a bunch of possibilities, but for our time today, get it, for our time do you know, look, the uh, production staff went to work today, not only providing you this goofy song, but we all have <laughs> 168 hours a week to spend. You and I do. You have it. I have it. God gives it to us. And we can look at a 24-hour day, but I'm just thinking about a week. We all have 168 hours a week, 24 hours a day times seven. If, and many of us, many of us don't work. <laughs> that's a little tongue in cheek but if you work a 40 hour week and hardly anyone does you're you're now at 128 hours available right during the week so once again i'm just looking at time we have 168 hours a week available to you and i if you don't work or, or you're retired what what are you doing with your time when you say i don't have any right you have a 40 hour work week that leaves 128 if you sleep Here's the Z's from the production staff. See those Z's there? If you sleep eight hours a day and no one does, even though we should, that's 56 hours. That still leaves you 72 hours in the week that are left to you after you have slept and after you have worked at a full-time job, you now have 72 hours to spend. Can't God get one or two of those hours during the week? to you to come to a Bible study? Why aren't why is attendance so poor at the two in-person Bible studies? I don't understand myself because if I had an opportunity to come in safely and, and talk with my fellow brothers and sisters about God and to study God's word, I would be all over it. But attendance at the two Bible studies is single digits and it should be double. But, you know, that's just up to priorities, right? You have to make it a priority. At St. Andrews, you have to come over at 10, an hour before church. That's not a big deal. At Faith Lutheran, you stay after. But it's always about God's call upon our hearts to study into God's word. And we all have time. And, you know, you look at, like, St. Andrews with the, the clothing closet, and you look over at Faith and the food pantry, um, about two pantries ago, we were really tight on volunteers, and it made the work very difficult. People have commitments. I know you have lives. I know you have things you have to do. But when we have 72 hours to spend in an average week, I really feel strongly that God should be able to get one, two, three of those hours in a volunteer position, in a Bible study. If you're not comfortable in person, they're offered online, Sunday night at 7, Wednesday night at 7. Just come, just log on and do it because God has called, God wants us to be in God's word. 
God wants us to be good stewards of our time, our talent, and our treasure. Pray about it, my friends. Pray about it, and feel free to talk with me if you have a question. Uh, we have a big event Saturday morning for both churches uh, coming on at 9.30. You're invited to be in person or on Zoom. You have two options, in person or on Zoom. You can come here to St. Andrews, and we'll have a, um, it all set up on a screen, and Pastor Jerry O'Neill from the Synod will present to us some stewardship concepts for daily life, right? It's not just about how much money you can give. Don't be angry about this money thing. When you do a topical search of all the topics of Jesus' teaching, he talks about money more than anything else. Don't, let, don't get mad about money. Be gifted and let God direct you on how and where you should spend your time and your talent and your treasure. Come Saturday morning at 9.30 at St. Andrews, either on your Zoom computer or in person. Coffee and some refreshments will be available. Feed them and they will come. It's very Lutheran. And it's 9.30 Saturday morning here at St. Andrews, the 9th. And I pray you will come so we can all grow in our understanding of how God is calling us to be uh, stewards, managers, not of an office necessarily or a church or but of managers of our life, time, talent, treasure. Maybe God is calling us to refresh uh, our mindset on this and to learn some new ways of being in the world, to learn some new ways of giving uh, of time and talent and treasure because your passion and your work and your call is needed in the church. And I love you and I pray for you. I wish you the very best of this day. Contact me if I can serve in any way, as you know. And uh, God be with you as we learn together about what it means to be stewards. See you, oops, see you Saturday morning. God bless you.